Now you listen to me, listen to me real good. I've told you once, I said it a thousand times. You get out of those pagan, satanic, religious, Christian churches. Christians do not follow the commandments of the Bible. Christians do what they want to do. They make up their own laws, their own rules, and their own regulations. Come out of her, my people, and come out from among them. And it's real simple and easy to ascertain who are these people you need to come out from. Easy. Number one, if they keep Sunday, that's an automatic sign that you need to not have any fellowship with these commandment-breaking wicked deceivers and seducers and bewitchers of the truth. Simple. Now, y'all, we do bless your magnificent, wonderful name. We thank you for being mindful of us. We thank you for the Messiah, Yahshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, how you set a plan of redemption to redeem us from our iniquity, sins, and transgressions. As we're in these end days, the end day, the end time that we're in, Father, we seek only to be holy, to draw closer to you, to be light unto the nations. Help us to understand who we are as Israel to get this revelation in our hearts and our minds so we'll start living like it even more so and that people will desire what we have, which is the king. We bless you for all things. Speak to us your words of truth in the mighty name and magnificent name of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated, Israel. All right. There's, there's two of them over there, Sister Angela. Dear Pastor Dal, Shalom. My name is. I'm a young man of 26 years living in Germany with my wife and my little daughter. We've been following your ministry for over a year now and are so thankful for your work and the knowledge we gained by listening to you. Hallelujah. I've been looking for a community here in Germany for me and my family to join, but I couldn't find the truth that you are preaching. Most of them are Messianic and Jewish oriented. Mm. So I would like to ask if there is a way for us here in Germany to be a part of your ministry. We desire to give our tithes and offerings to Straightway as well as being a part of the Straightway family. Hope to hear from you, Pastor. I appreciate you so much. And may the Father bless you and your house and all the saints of Straightway. Shalom. I wonder how much it would cost to get on a German radio station over there. Hmm? I remember I was paying anywhere between $1,500 and $2,000 a month to be on shortwave radio in the early 2000s. That's a lot of money. I really was, and I was only taking in, as far as offering wise, maybe eight hundred to eleven hundred dollars. Hmm? I did have one old man die, Elder Doug, and I was working on the roof down there. One old man died, and uh, had his company call me up and said he uh, left me an inheritance. He did. You remember that Elder Doug? Left me. 30 ounces of gold. Glory. If I was smart, I would have took the gold back then. I actually cashed it in for Federal Reserve notes so we could finish the roof and do a few other things on the community. You remember that? Yes, sir. That's amazing, isn't it? Yes, sir. And I never did meet him. I never met him. There's probably more than that because considering, because it ended up being thirty something thousand dollars and then by the time they got finished, you know, Uncle Sam getting his inheritance taken. You know, gutting it and everything else. It, you know what I mean? It's about a little twenty six thousand, something like that. Isn't that beautiful? See some people put a high value on the word. Right. Glory. I mean really. You realize the changes that's taken place since you've heard the word? A lot of people don't understand why we do why why we doing people think we're doing this community thing because we're doing it for our health. Huh? We're doing this thing for our salvation. Yes, Are you following me? Yes, sir. And people just don't get it. I don't care how many times. Ties, you heard me break this community thing down a thousand different ways, ain't you? Yes, but anyway, we welcome you thinking of being on board, don't we? Yes, hmm? Just send a, a postal U.S. money order uh, over to Highway 632 and we will spend it on God's kingdom, I promise you. Um, 
but most people don't, they don't understand they, they, you know, I, I just don't understand how people are, are Bible scholars today and yet they miss this common unity thing I mean I read the book you read it don't you how you miss it hmm you know, old Dave Thompson, huh? You hear all that plea. That's the reason why I had the broadcast go that direction last night. You hear all them brethren that was reaching out to this man? That let you know once Satan has entered into someone, there ain't no amount of reason. You know what he's basically saying? All of them are wrong and he's right. And like I said, if I said it once, I said it a thousand times. Man, if anybody out there got any problems with Brother Steve and Sister Winda in Canada, you are the devil. You are nothing but the devil incarnate. Satan's son. Hallelujah. That's just a fact. Them are true Israelites. Yes, they are too. Humble, humility. And of course, you run across something like that. Satan had already had a plan set up to try to wear them out, didn't he? Get them to turn for the faith. Do you know sometimes that, that the way you carry yourself and your attitude and your life puts a stumbling block before the ones who will come? You understand that? Y'all hear that? Some people get a sour taste in their mouth when they meet you posing as Israelites. That's part and parcel for being offended. And, and we never take an account of it. He had an opportunity to actually uh, be there to help serve with sister, uh, brother, brother Stephen and Sister Winda. And, and of course he had his own ideas and they manifested, didn't he? That means, you know, usually after a blow up like that, I usually just get rid of people. But that's three something years we were, look at this, long suffering. Especially, Brother Steve, still trying to reach out after all that chaos and carnage. See, when people get into attitudes and spirit like it, they think it's everybody else and not them. And the only, the only person that's going to convince them is the king when he comes. And it's going to be too late then. It's going to be entirely too late. Is that not sad though? That's a sad situation. Now we look at, look at our nice little family that we have in here. This is Yah's plan for retirement. And nursing home. Are y'all getting this? Yes, sir. Everybody is worried about my family. I got to do this because of my family. That system already got it set up out there. What are you going to do? What are your family going to do out there if it's just you and your family and you die? What's the game plan? Who can you trust with your family? You can't trust your natural family. You can't your natural family molesting and raping your children. Yeah. Yes, a little girl don't stand a snowball chance in hell going to being raised today. No, they ain't holler. I guarantee you probably 90% of the women grow, grew up today has been molested in some form. No, yes, sir. Isn't that right? It is. That's a sad situation. Is, yes, you don't have to worry about that around our family. Because we'll cane your ass. <laughs> And then turn you over. Use the law for the lawless. We're supposed to have. Now I want y'all to watch this American spirit here for a second. Is this Torah portion this morning? I want you to watch this American spirit. Y'all can shut the door right now. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I want y'all to listen to this American spirit. We had somebody that called here and said they was coming from Portland, Tennessee. Is that correct, Elder Doug? Are they here? Are they here? Now, let me interject something here, okay? I know I'm going to offend a lot of Americans. When you call and you get the go-ahead to come, we're, we're not the Baptist church on the corner up here. We're a family. So that means logistically we have to prepare things to accommodate the amount of people that's coming. That's the reason why we want to know who's coming and how long you're staying. Yes, sir. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. 
Is there something wrong with that, brother? No, sir. There ain't nothing wrong there. Hmm? Now watch this. First thing I did was ask the elders this morning. And I said, where's the, where's the guy from Portland? Oh, he, he didn't show up. I said, he didn't show up. So then I came in here and asked Elder Doug. I said, Elder Doug, did he call? Uh-uh, no, I said. Isn't that something? Elder Doug said, yeah, that's that American spirit, isn't it? Would not that be the honorable thing to do to call to say, hey, I can't make it? Would that not be the honorable thing to do? And I guarantee you, sitting on the other end of the camera, being all offended right now. Because ain't nobody ever called him on this attitude. You know, you've been permitted to act like this all your life. Now, how you think you're going to be counted as honorable men and women unless somebody call you to task? That's just common courtesy. You tell somebody, you see the reason why we ask who coming? When you coming? Because if not, we have people sashaying up here. We've had people come up here with, with a whole entire trailer that belong and say, we're here to live. Pull up their whole entire home. I say, you are, huh? Yeah, yeah, we're here to live. No, you ain't either. You can't be listening to me not looking like that. Suppose I just drive up my family in a camping trailer and say, here I is, take care of me. Would that be all right? No, no, no. But then all of a sudden, they get a case of the rear end when I call them on their attitude. These chemtrails and these GMO modified foods, the fluoride, the mercury, the vaccines, they all but have ran their course. They literally have all but ran their course. But this is the attitude of Americans. Can you believe that? I think it's just honorable and common courtesy. That if you call to say you're going to come and you can't make it, you pick up the phone and you call back and say, hey, listen, I intended on making it, but I can't make it. That way you keep yourself in good standing. Because you ever, if you ever decide to come, if you're hearing this, I'm still going to rebuke you. I ain't gonna rebuke. See, people think the rebuke don't hurt. People think it's a spiritual, but it hurts. Yeah, it does too. It weighs heavy on you. Yes, it does, too. See, if you get hit with a stick, pow, it's over with. Yeah, uh, you got a little sting for a little time, and ain't a little my head good to go, but that rebuke, ugh. Now, is there something wrong with me? I'm going to talk to you, Elder Spinney. You got Eastern background. Is that just common courtesy or not? Courtesy call. That's the way it should be done, right, Elder, Elder Donnie? Is that right? That's the way it should be done, right? And you know what them people will do? Who do he think he is? Talking to me like that. I'm grown. Well, damn it, act grown. That's a sad situation. How are they going to raise their children? Now you see the reason why these children in America are gone wild, gone mad. Can't get no honor amongst their own family. They can't even produce this. How do you expect for them to put this kind of character in their children? That's the reason why I talk about stuff like this. I'm glad to know we got a family over in Germany that's listening. Isn't that all right? And they've been listening to me a year, boy. They have, they have heard the fire and the storm, ain't they? Whoo, that's all right. Isn't that all right? That is all right. Brother Tyson, did you know I'm a racist? You didn't know that, man. Man, if I've been called racist once, I've been called racist a thousand times this week. You hear that, Sister Ashley? I'm a racist. They even made a video about Sister Ashley, and they said, okay, I, yeah, okay, you right on the destruction of American everything. Yeah, you right, Pastor Dow. And then they put a video up on, on that Sister Ashley and say, well, who is this? I type back and say, it's my damn sister, nigga. <laughs> what the hell you think it is? Brother Shane, where is that syringe at? Bring that syringe up here, brother. It's up here, brother. I tell you what. This, 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 I, it, where is it at, brother Shane? Huh? Oh, 
this, this right here, it's, it's ready to go. This is a syringe, and it's got Christianity on it. It's got a needle right here you can put at the end of it and get a heavy dose of lies. And boy, I tell you, this, this, y'all people have been taking too much of this stuff. They, they don't go for the little stuff no more. They go for the big stuff, bro. They want it all, man. <laughs> this stuff has messed these people up today. <laughs> huh? What does that say, bro Scott? Come here, bro Scott. What does that say right there? Christianity. Christianity. <laughs> all we need now is something to tie our wrists up, bro, and just get a good dose of it. And... <laughs> Gee. <laughs> and this is what messed people up. And you know, when, when people come around, if they don't have any good behavior, they put their behavior on. Because they can tell we're honorable people. It takes time for us to come this way. Yeah, it does. We didn't wake up one morning and we were this way. We're disciplined people. But the community, my, it's got to be the best thing going day. Got to be the best thing going day. Really. Just think about <clears throat> hypothetical situation. Suppose... Elder Donnie pass away here in a few years. You think that Ajali's family going to want her back down there? Ajali, do you want to go back down there? Oh, hell no. <laughs> and she said, oh, no. You know, he can go on to the kingdom in peace. Is that all right? She ain't got to worry about nothing. We'll take care of her. We'll move heaven and earth to take care of her. Is that all right? You're supposed to take care of those that are widows. Indeed. Isn't that right? If you ain't no widow indeed, we can't take care of you. Uh-oh. Isn't that something? That blueprint was laid out over the book of Acts. Given to us by the apostles. Who... who Paul said that they, he has set first the Messiah did right. in the assemblies. Right. Yeah. Now, a lot of these people, you, if you went and read the resume of an apostle, yeah. they're guaranteed one of the things that's on their resume is death. Yeah. True. Martyr. True. Yeah. Now, how many people are apostles today then? Yeah. Right. These manicured nails and these <laughs> metrosexuals. Yeah, met apostles. Real funny. Real funny. Huh? I need to take an opportunity to go to this because we I mean we we need this. Because we we let things slip. And that's not including all the brethren that saw their spirit on him. When he said, I saw the spirit on him. He didn't say too much word, too many words to me at all. I feel okay, the brothers will take care of it. Still couldn't penetrate it. See, when a spirit enter into these people, there ain't nothing you can do. There's nothing you can do. That's why you have to keep yourself in the love of y'all. Nobody can recover you. Not from the snare. Once the enemy get in. Do y'all realize something? Every single tongue that has ever risen up against me in judgment in the last few years, every one of them have fallen away. Who are they listening to? Benny Hinn? I guarantee they ain't listening to nobody. And we need, the Bible says, forsake not the assembly. Of yourselves as the manner of some is. It has become a mannerism. How you, I can't grow without you, brother. I know I may be the pastor. I still can't grow without you. They without us could not be made perfect. I need you. You need me, period. You don't get some good brothering growth out here. Come out here and work with us this summer. You know, right, Brother Darrell, you get some good trying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes, We're going to test and try your spirit. Yes, sir. It's either one or two things you're going to say, bless y'all, you're going to want to jump off the top of the building, one of the things. <laughs> That's one reason why the brother and carry a better relationship than the sisters do, because we work together all the time. Yes, sir. We're around each other all the time. Y'all can't wait to get done to go do nothing. Look at him. He's got quiet in here now, didn't he? Yes, sir. Then he get quiet. 
Women are something else. Yes, am, I, am, am, I, am I stating a false statement, sisters? Then why get all quiet on me? You have an opportunity. Oh, I know you're going to follow the scripture. Let the women keep silence in the church. You know? Well, it's not permitted on them to speak. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but our sisters are doing well. They're doing well. They're getting there. I mean, the sisters are laboring here in love and straightway. They really truly are. And we don't want nobody to come messing up our common unity. But man, I've been called a racist a lot this week, Brother Ty. I didn't even know it. It's all news to me. Hey, man, I'm a racist. Look at this, man. That's one thing I ain't never been accused of is being a racist. I guess that's the first time for everything. Hmm? That's amazing, isn't it? Come on, Sister Ash, with the next letter. Shalom, Pastor Dow and family. First, I want to give thanks to the Almighty Yah and for the blood, thanking him for sending me a pastor that has a loud enough voice to break through this wicked flesh. Well, loud enough voice, notice. Loud. See, some people, they, they, they look at my delivery. You know, they, pay, they go, man, that man... He, man, he's mad. He's upset. But while looking at they also paying attention to the message. And, and here in America, you know, we used to these lying politicians. You know, they polish in their speech, smooth talkers, deceivers. They get up and say eloquent words to us. We receive them. We receive them. Damn, America got a hat on Barack Hussein Obama, didn't they? Damn it, we got an Oreo in office now. We got change. You got change, all right. Change you can't believe in. From bad to worse. Isn't that something? And the black folks really got an uproar. Huh? I bet Martin Luther was crying in his grave. Isn't that something? Yeah, he crying. It's a crying. <laughs> crying to see that the, <laughs> the black folks ain't still in, and their condition is worse now than it's ever been. This thing got to do with what the scripture says, do the rich poor. Do not rich men oppress you. Bring you before their councils. Yes, they do. That's what the book said. You worry about and it's, and it's not amazing, brother, if I just talk about the color of Jesus or whatever it is, and all of a sudden, everybody gets in uproar. But as long as you leave the lie alone, everybody's fine. Ask me if I really care what color Jesus is. Do you really care what color Jesus is? No. Why do I care what color he is? It means a lot to them, though. It does. It does. I'm just stating the truth. Somebody said, Pastor, you need to preach the truth. So I sent three scriptures. Daniel 10, 6. Revelation 1, 14 and 15. I still ain't got no answer yet. <laughs> why? Because it's preaching the color of the Messiah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If it wasn't that important, why is it in the book? I still ain't heard nothing. See, the problem is, is that the attitude they got, they think that I have. And they fight against it. And then they fight against themselves. As if there's going to be some superiority in the skin. No, it's superiority if you're an Israelite. Says who? See, while their whole life consists in the abundance of things which they possess, I was don't. I was based on the New Jerusalem. And the people can't get it. And they ain't never heard nobody that would, that would say white man, black man, nigger, honky, hoogie, cracker, negro, sambo, coon, porch monkey. They ain't, they ain't never heard nobody talking like that. What in the world? This man. I give him a point over. Yes, no. Yes. Just take note of being with Jesus. But what a sad situation we're in in society today. This is truly sad. I'm looking for the people who got a message of deliverance for, they keep saying, our people. I'm looking for the man. Who, who, who's actually doing the message then? People doing communities all over this land. And it's mostly for their family, immediate family. 
I'm doing it for my family. I drive all over, all over the earth and fly all over just to go visit family. Why? The family of y'all. The ones that's eternal. What's wrong with that? I had somebody on the video. I did a video over at the, uh, the BMW Mercedes dealer. You know what they said? They said, oh, you're making a video at the BMW dealer? Question mark. If I want to drive a Mercedes, is it all right with y'all? Hmm? Now, they, they probably ain't going to like my Mercedes. You know, I'm Mercedes. Yep, but yes, I was at the BMW Mercedes dealer. I got a Mercedes in the shop right now. In the shop. I sure do. It's a 1999. How many years is that? 15 years? Huh? 16 years old. 16 years. And people are going to gripe. And I paid $6,000 for it. You could have you one too. All you got to do is don't be a dumb dumb. You don't go out there and pay no $80,000 when you can wait a few years and get it for $6,000. <laughs> and they mad at uh, not only me, but they, everybody drives it here. That thing's all over the place. And it's got, I think, 157,000 miles on it. I know you're listening. Made a video and said, uh, <clears throat> every time I turn around, he got a <clears throat> seventy thousand dollar trucks. Fifty thousand dollar cars. Y'all ask yourself a question: Do you think it, that I would actually spend seventy thousand dollars on a hunk of iron? <laughs> I could buy some land, some building material, <laughs> some food, improve living conditions. So they, they see the truck. Oh, that's a nice truck, Pastor Dow. Sure is. 2001. Got 310,000 miles on it. Paid $12,000 for it, got a good deal because the dealer stuck his foot in his mouth about four or five years ago. He's supposed to have been charging me between seventeen and 19000 but he said, oh, it's, it's probably about 2500 I said, 25000 no, 12500 12500 12, 12, yeah, 12000 I said, good, I'll be back. I, you heard it. I, I so did. He, he committed to it to him. I, you were there? I mentioned it how many times to make sure I was hearing the right answer. I didn't care if it didn't have a transmission in it. I was going to buy that one. Because <laughs> I knew he slipped the tongue. And he was, I, I, that's why I asked him two or three times. See, don't y'all people feel like an ass out there? <laughs> Should. Should. How, much, how much more smarter do you, can you be? And it's sad, I, mean, I have to get out, because you know a lot of people got these questions in their mind. There it is. We ain't got a vehicle on this land that we have paid over $16,000 for at one time. Not a one. Oh, y'all look like y'all <clears throat> doing fine. Yeah, we, we try to take care of what we got. And of course, you know, you're full of vanity. As soon as it get 80,000 miles, you think the thing is ready for the dump heat. You know how it is out there. And of course, you, you, you got to keep your ego up. And you think you go out there and spend 
five hours washing the vehicle and it's going to rain the next day. You ain't never seen the people get in the vehicles drive and they, and they got this look at me spirit. Vanity, vanity, vanity. They don't think they're going to look good. I don't give a damn how I look without that driving a vehicle. It's there to serve a purpose, point A to point B. Now, some vehicles you can get to point A, point B a little bit better. You know, a little bit more luxurious, you know what I mean. Some of them like a stagecoach. What's your vehicle of choice of driving, Elder Doug? The truck. Ask me what my vehicle of choice of driving is. The truck. The F-250, how do you think it's got 300-something thousand miles on it? We can't keep Elder Doug out of it. Well, Scott, you drive that thing all over the place, don't you? As a matter of fact, if you have ever drove that, that truck, that F-250, stand up. If you ever drove it, stand up. Stand, all y'all come up here, please. All y'all come up here just drove that F-250. If you ever drove the F-250. Now watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Come on. Them the old men. <laughs> but they in the back. Y all, y all, you know what I'm saying? I'm making a point, don't you? I said, if you have ever drove that truck, the F-250, please stand up. Now, how many people would you let drive your vehicle? You ever heard that song by Sister Sledge? We are family. Hey, hey, hey y'all. I got all my sisters and me. I got my brothers and sisters and me. Hey, we are family. Hey, come on, everybody. Sing. <laughs> you people should be ashamed of yourself. But we live in a generation that don't have no shame. No shame. At any given time, people need to use the vehicle, provided it's not going to be used for some, something else. They usually get the vehicle and take it where it needs to go. That just, it's, it's ignorance is too strenuous, man. It just really, truly, why? Because we function as a community. Why should we have to go out there and get insurance on all these people right here we can just put the vehicle in one person in, in name? Right. Sure. They even trying to make laws now, trying to say that, well, you, you got to have insurance on everybody to drive. That's a bunch of racket. Yep. Oh, yeah. It's got a bunch of racket. All you got to do is drive sensibly. Somebody hits you, they pay. Right. Period. Yes, Isn't that right? Yes, sir. Now, that's something, considering that everybody worrying about all the vehicles that we're driving around here. Thank y'all. Thank y'all very much. If y'all drove, anybody here drove that white egg, we call it the egg. If you drove the egg, stand up here, please. Come on up here and stand. I don't care if you drove it from the dining hall to the church. This is something. Because most people wouldn't let them, they wouldn't even let their own friend drive their car from the driveway to the, to the, to the street. Now look at this. My, this is our Mercedes. BMW Mercedes dealer. Sitting out there. Well, look at here. Look at here. You mean tell me all y'all done drove that thing somewhere? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. How many people drive your vehicle? Why y'all saying such a video? She behind the camera. That's good. She she was behind. So the Vicky too. She behind the camera. Yep. These people should be ashamed of themselves. The audacity, huh? Yes, sir. And people all the time are trying to call, call me up, ask me how you do this community thing. You ain't got the spirit to. You ain't got the stomach nor the spirit to. Bro, Daryl gonna be a truck driver, and he's already got land purchased over here. That he's purchased. He he can't be building and driving at the same time. True. I mean, so that means the brothers gonna have to help him build this. And we don't mind either. It's better for us to do it than to pay their world. 
We just do it because we're brethren. That's a beautiful thing, isn't it? it, is. it is. And I get all this from the Bible. <laughs> from the B-I-B-L-E. That's the book for me. <laughs> Bless y'all. It's unbelievable. The attitudes of today. Erica, you should have been standing up here too. <laughs> That's amazing, isn't it? And these people today don't have, now notice, I'm angry, I'm cruel, I'm vindictive, I'm mad, I'm racist. racist. <laughs> See, I, I got to keep, I guess I got to put that in there too. You know what I mean? I'm like, dang. All this. Now, if I'm that kind of angry, crude, mad man and stuff, would all this be going on? I can only drive one vehicle at a time. I just took off. We bought a brand, it ain't brand new, but we just purchased a vehicle the other day. No more than, I don't know, maybe two months ago, we bought a, a Chevy Tahoe. Is that right? We bought a, a nice black Chevy Tahoe. Look at him looking out there. We bought a nice one. I drove it to town the other day. I was like, man, somebody hit this, they in trouble. They in some serious trouble, boy. That thing got a steel bumper. Huh? How much we pay for that, that van, Elder Doug? Two thousand smackaroos. That's breaking the bank, ain't it? Loaded that thing up the other day with kerosene and gas and everything, didn't we? We pay two thousand. You drive everything all the time, don't you? Every, every day. Every day. Every day. Four-wheel drive, too. Love it. You know, it's got to be double the rating on insurance, four-wheel drive. $2,000 we paid for. How many miles is that thing on? Does it still work? The gauge work? How many miles got on the other, dude? 180,000 miles. You can have you a nice Chevy Tahoe, too, for a low, low price of $2,000. These folks are something, ain't they? They literally mad. Just literally mad today. Isn't that beautiful? Huh? And I bet everybody, how y'all do it? Because we don't live the way you live. We just don't do like you do. That's how we do it. Somebody need one of the saints, especially our sisters, they're not mechanics. We got a brother around here that's working mechanic, but Elder Doug's probably about our best one. Probably Brother James and, and you know, probably Brother Darrell and them and everything. And uh, there's most things, some things we can take care of, but other things we can't take care of. That Mercedes is in the shop because it's things that, it, you know, we probably could, but we don't have 15 hours a day to try to figure out what's going on and try to figure out how to do it. They got the tools to do it. So we take it up there and get it done to make sure that our sisters can ride in safety. That's right, our cult sisters, they ride in Mercedes and BMWs and we need to get a Lexus to top it off. Yeah. That's what we need. We need to get a Lexus. Look for a Lexus, Elder Doug. We look, we get a Lexus. Isn't that amazing? These people, it's unbelievable. It's a sad situation the way the minds is today, isn't it? You know why? Because people can't think outside of their box. Cannot think outside their box. Oh, yeah, by the way, all, all you men that live on this community and stuff, how many of you people have Under Armour clothing? Raise your hand. Y'all come up here. Is that clothing, shoes? Well, I'll be. Unbelievable. I'm just talking about the people that live on the community. And here y'all come again, huh? I bet they say, I wish Pastor would stop this. 
See, they see me, and first thing they do is uh, Under Armour. I was wearing Under Armour when it first came out, when it was when it was on the shelf at Walmart. You didn't know nothing about it. I didn't care if it was Under Armour, Speed Old Champion, whoever it was. Isn't that amazing? You should be ashamed of yourself, shouldn't you? Y'all got Under Armour shirts? Shoes? Pants? Oh, you know what they call them, little sweatpants things. Isn't that something? It's all amazing, isn't it? It, it? If I'm going to wear it, if I'm wearing it, they wearing it. And I get, I got, hey, I got people that come to the feast days that buy me Under Armour on purpose. They say, here, Pastor, bless you. This is for your enemies. <laughs> Them brothers filled me up with all kind of Under Armour stuff. I gave some of it away, man. A lot of good stuff. First thing Sister Misty noticed, that's an under, look at that knife right there, look at that. Under Armour clothing. I mean, it's some good clothing. At least what I've checked out has lasted a while. I got some Under Armour pants that I know is over 18 years. How long has the company been out? Anybody know? Eight and a half years? I got one of the first, I got first few pair. Still got them today. Utterly amazing. Thank y'all. I tell you, see, the problem is, is that they still think individually, and they do not think collectively. See, the Bible says in the community thing, and no man had nothing he called his own. And we don't have nothing we call our own. Now, we have what we call our own houses and stuff like it, our own, you know, dwelling places and stuff like it. And we're going to be working on that, and we got to add on an extension right here because there's a lot of babies, a lot of children. And I look, that little room just ain't going to work right now, but we had other things we had to get by first. And it takes a little time. You know, we don't, we're not like the professors out there where we got every piece of equipment that does everything for us, and then we charge an exorbitant amount of price, to, you know, for it to get done. We have to actually physically do it and come up with ways. We use pulleys and trees and... <laughs> you understand what I mean? There's babies in Israel and stuff, so we have to make more rooms and all, like the sleeping rooms and... Whooping rooms and, you know what I mean? Got to extend out the bathroom facility. Can you imagine having two, two, three hundred people here and everybody's trying to fight for two toilets? That was fine when we was just 20, 30 of us. We got the best bathroom facility in the world. Right there is a wood line right there. If ain't nobody ever taught you how to use a wood line, it's simple. There's a tree. You got an automatic toilet. Look. You can squat the whole nine yards. You can get it done, male or female. Look at that. Effortlessly. If you want convenience. And you don't even have to go to Walmart and buy a bucket and a toilet seat. And toilet paper, all you have to do is pick up some leaves and off you go. Somebody said, oh, I can't fathom. You will one day. I promise you, you will. And the way things are going, it's going to be sooner than you think. You better believe it. See, it's the minds. When are you going to finish reading that letter, sister? My eyes are open, and I can see. All I want to do is be holy. My children are singing in their sleep. My son even told his sister in his sleep to put on her head cover. In his sleep. Put your head covering on. <laughs> my wife and I have dropped all holidays all toys with images, cartoons, music TV crap and unclean foods we eat and still dying daily all thanks to the most high and bless all the saints brothers, sisters, elders and pastors can't wait to see you all, shalom in all caps with a clip art that says hook line and sinker he has him and his wife and their four children listed who are eight, seven, five, and 3 and hey, you know what that was it what was that song There'll be peace in the valley. Everyone that comes this way, if they just get with the program, they have peace in their homes. Brother Ty, you ain't got to holler and scream at your wife, do you? Not often. You mean, you talking about raising your voice. You ain't, you ain't like, ah! Don't nobody do that around here. Everybody just assume we do. We don't do that. You do that because you don't have no self-control.
What a world we live in. It's a Uh-oh, look at him looking.